Okay, welcome everyone. Saturday morning. Can you guys hear me okay? If anyone can hear me, why don't you guys go ahead and leave a comment letting me know you, my audio is good, and then we'll get started. Yep, okay, cool. Okay, early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese, so let's go ahead and get started. And we'll just, as people trickle in, we'll go ahead and just go through some charts and look at, you know, what you guys are, are asking for. And then I've got some comments from my last video where people were asking for me to look, look at some charts. So in between, we can maybe pop through some of those. I'm going to start out with this Goldman Sachs one, and then I'll just start rolling through the comments. Uh, if you guys can keep your comments, uh, you know, it, Put, put in all caps question or something like that so that I can actually see that question. Uh, I get a lot of, um, you know, if you have a specific stock you want me to look at, put it question and then put the stock you want me to look at because there's, you know, I have to kind of scroll through these things. Okay, so we'll start out here with Goldman Sachs. Someone asked on my last video to take a look at that. And so I was kind of just starting to look at it, look at that this morning. Again, everything I cover, for one thing, some of this analysis is pretty pretty on the fly. So, you know, if I if I don't have a good read on it, I'll you know I'll try to let you guys know that you know I'm not confident on on what I see or I just don't have a good read on it. Sometimes you don't get enough data points on a chart, especially if it's a new stock, that we can really get a, get a clean read on it. Uh, this is Goldman Sachs though. So what we've got here, obviously financials have been rallying. Uh, recently when the interest rates started dropping on the TLT, the long bond, the financials were rallying because the yield curve was steepening. So you've got you know, the short end of the curve, which is uh, that the Fed's got that pegged basically at pretty much zero. Uh, and then you've got the long end of the curve, which is more market, you know, more market sensitive. And that is, uh, that's been selling off. So, the, the, you know, the long bond has been anticipating inflation, causing interest rates to rise on the long end of the curve, which helps banks, you know, borrow short and lend long. Uh, so what we've got here is someone asked me if this is a good short. And I, I, I don't see it yet. I think it's, there's a possible, possible setup. Uh, I would not be short this thing yet. But the thing that I see on, on this daily chart is you've got this uptrend line. This is really going back to November. Uh, I think that's when the XLF, let's flip over to here, see when that started to take off. Well, yeah, that that actually, st yeah, we were kind of consolidating right here on financials, right below that resistance in November. Then we started to take off. So going back to GS, um, this thing started to take off back then, and there's your uptrend. So, bear, you know, bearish rising wedge, um, and we've got, let's zoom into the hourly, just to clean that up a little bit. Eh, sometimes they don't make it easy. Um, it's right in, yeah. So there's a, that's a false breakout right there. We'll just say it's basically right in there. Let's go back to the daily. So there's your bearish rising wedge. Uh, so you have a bearish pattern and you got negative divergence down here. See it on the PPO and the RSI. So we really started, you know, this is your divergent high. Let me find my tool. There it is. Uh, this is divergent high price action. All this price action right up in here is new highs in price made on lower momentum. And so that's likely going to reverse course. It doesn't have to, and we can obviously can continue to wedge out. Uh, so what we look for using this, uh, you know, this strategy and everything is a break of the trend line. All right, you need that sell signal. That will come in the form of a gap down 
or an impulsive breakdown during uh, during the day. If you get that cell signal, you know you look for the first reactions. So you, obviously we have a reaction there, and you can see that's a you know you have two when you're looking at this. Obviously you, we came down and held support right here, and that's that's kind of dual support because you had this upward trend line, so that was, was acting as support, and then. You also have this breakout candle right here, how it was pretty impulsive break higher, um, and and there's volume. See the volume? You always look for volume, but there's volume on that break, so volume helps. Uh, you know, it's always a good idea to kind of look down at the, your volume bars to see what kind of volume you're getting on moves. That helps uh, validate certain things. So I see that as your first level of support or at least a level of support let's see that's about 272 about 272 I, I don't like to give exact pennies on, on the support I like to give it you know this is 200 or 327 dollar stock so you know if I throw out 272 and you get in that area consider that hitting a support level um, and again usually when you're shorting if you're falling down to a support level you don't want to wait till you're right there on it to cover your trade or take profit. You want to uh, step in a little bit early. So what I usually do is kind of just get get in there and look at it and, and get a little bit early, set my uh, you know my order to you know buy to cover, and then uh, as it falls, it, it hits that and I, I take profit. Um, and yeah, so I don't see anything that looks super clean for other support levels. I mean, yeah, you maybe you have one right in here, but this one's pretty obvious. I think you run down to that, and could go lower, but that's the that's the cleanest one that I see, and that would be a move from you know, depending on when you break. You know, if this wants to grind higher, then it's obviously going to fall more. But let's just say we call it from where it's at right now, about 17 percent. All right, so I suspect we grind higher and then break. All right, let me look at what else you guys got. We'll just start at the top here. Restoration Hardware, is that, I think that's RH. Okay. Is this restoration hardware? Let me double check. Yeah, I guess that's it. <clears throat> okay, so clear trend right here. Uh, this is obviously your COVID lows right there, and you've just been making this trend. It's right about there. If you, if you can't, again, what you want to do is to make a trend again use log scaling and then you're also going to want to find the most data points all right you, you, you can connect any two dots i could make call this a trend i could call that a trend i could call that a trend you want to connect the most reactions to verify your trend so in this scenario and this plays well with a lot of the other trend lines that i have you've got this trend right here you've got a false breakdown right there and we had that false breakdown in the markets across a lot of different stocks and sectors. So um, that, that makes sense. And then it's a recovery. All the days we recovered and now it's starting to ramp higher. I don't know if this is earnings or what that is, but obviously the volume spike from off of that level as well. Um, looking at the top, you got a price channel basically that you're kind of walking, walking within. <coughs> there you go. One second, guys. I gotta grab my dog. I have a needy Doberman pincher sitting at my office door. All right, so <clears throat> that's what I got there. Looking at the, yeah, you you have clear negative divergence here. This is actually a negative divergence that's been building for quite some time. Okay, so that's what I got. We, you know, we're just continuing to uptrend. So the trend is up, and that's obvious. 
you have negative divergence building, signaling that you're gonna get a trend reversal, but we don't have that trend reversal yet. So I, if I was gonna short this, I would definitely wait for a impulsive breakdown of this lower trend line. Uh, you also have the 200 day kind of creeping below it. So likely what this would do is probably break, run down to the 200, bounce off the 200, run back up and back test, and then start to <clears throat> trend lower. I mean, that's a possibility, obviously. Uh, support, you got a gap here. We always look for gaps, that's key. Uh, and let's tighten this up. Yeah, so I would see that as probably a first reaction point is, you know, the 200 is gonna get a reaction, but I would say down here is a likely a support level. And that's sitting about 324. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So I covered Boeing two weeks ago. I was out last week down in Vegas. Uh, <clears throat> and so I took that week off, but this is what I had from two weeks ago. And I don't see any change here. Um, <clears throat> we've got a trend line, not the cleanest trend line. You know, I, I think I probably mentioned that. It's just not, not really my favorite support line down here. The thing is, if I make that trend line, I only have two data points, one, two. That's not good enough, at least from my perspective. So this is, yeah, again, it's just not the cleanest trend support line. But what I do see is some negative divergence that hasn't changed. It's still there, an upward trend. Uh, you know, this is a divergent high here. And you can see the divergent high when I circled it two weeks ago, I said, okay, this is likely to fail. And we did, you know, I mean, from that high, that's down 15%. Where do we go from here? Well, you know, we could hit this again. I'm, I don't have confidence in this trend line. So I don't have the best read on this one. I'll just let you guys know. Oh, Friday's closed. Yeah, you know, the thing is, <clears throat> so I was actually watching the market right at that time. And let me kind of show you guys what I had going on on Friday. So the market, um, not this list, the market had this crazy ramp up in the last like 20, 30 minutes. One thing to realize on a Friday into the close is not typically institution trade institutional trading i mean you've got algos they're always there they're always on during the market so those are going to fire uh but you don't have big pensions or institutions that are trying to like move big money around in, in the last 20 minutes on a friday it, it's not very common i mean it obviously can happen but it's usually a pretty thinly traded time so if you get some sort of a directional move where algos just start firing uh you know they can make a thinly trade a thin move up or down oftentimes that gets faded or reversed the following week um, but one thing that i was looking at let me go to the for this one you probably need to look at like the five minute um all right so again on cues like tech i was watching this 311 level right and this is the level i've been talking about so the you know on a close on a Friday, obviously they're gonna try to give you a little whipsaw signal. And that's what they started to do. So I actually took a short on this and I saw it, you know, it started to break and it looked good. Here's the break, the back test here. And then, and then it continued to break. So I was like letting that ride. But then on my trading platform, I use Lightspeed uh, Desktop Trader. I saw this big candle just boom spike in there and I in, and I noticed that and I instantly closed all my short you know I closed my Q short and my I had an IWM short as well I closed that because I figured that we were gonna get some sort of whipsaw it again we were breaking down Friday towards the end of the day so that's a very that's a time when you got to be suspicious of any move and then that big spike, I just closed it and I actually like broke even basically. And then this whole ramp here, I that, I just let that run. That just ran higher. Uh, I do own some gold miners. So, you know, the gold miners were running higher. But in general, 
look at where it closed at. You know, it, I had this line marked out because this is kind of the midway. We've been getting reactions around this line here at 315.83, and it basically ramped right up to that. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that, but on the bigger picture of Friday's close, I just go back, you know, again, sometimes it's helpful to just get off that one minute chart, you know, get, get off that five minute chart, whatever kind of chart you're looking at, and just always take a look back at the, the larger pattern, uh, the daily chart, you know, I, the weekly is not so much important for swing trading. I mean, that's good for investing and, and understanding where, you know, the massive, where the flow of the oceans going but take a step back and look at the bigger time frame and say okay what's actually happening nothing's technically really changing so that's all i see on that one um yep all right we're gonna keep rolling through these see if i can find some xle all right energy so I got these marked in purple, just some oil stocks I've been looking at. All right, so in general, I like oil because uh, longer term, obviously, fundamentally, they're just printing tons of money, uh, trying to keep demand artificially uh, stimulated. And that is, you know, that's going to be bullish longer term for ever, any kind of hard assets. Obviously, I think a lot of people have been on board this commodities and inflation trade it's kind of consensus now so usually when everything becomes consensus you're going to get some sort of, of a reversal or you know washout move we saw that in gold back in uh, august where it was ramping higher and everybody was buying gold and then you know it's been in correction mode ever since so i think that's likely we're going to get more correcting in oil xle uh, XLE, you know, you had some negative divergence. If you look here on the RSI, let me zoom in there, you can see started to build a little negative divergence right there. And so that was basically, there's some divergent high price action. We got a trend line here on the daily. We broke trend, so you got a sell signal. Uh, it wasn't super impulsive, but there was continued selling. So it continued to sell off, ran down to the first level of support, which is about 47. We're getting a bounce off of that, but I think we're, honestly, I think we have some more downside. Could be wrong, but I think we're gonna come down to what I can see, it's kind of a messy chart, but I really think this level down here at 42, all right? And we'll probably find some good support there. You can see that was back here. This is your island cluster top reversal pattern that we got uh, way back here. And this is where it gapped to. All right, we gapped above, gapped down. We have two strong gap reactions. Also had resistance here, broke above, broke down. It starts to chop through it a little bit, but we had some reactions back there. So I think that will be a level that will likely uh, magnet, you know, will likely, uh, you know, be like a magnet to get down there and then we'll see where, where things go. All right, let's see here. Tilray, that's a pot stock. Um, these I don't typically mess around with. Again, these are momentum stocks. Momentum stocks, oftentimes, the charts don't, you know, sometimes they don't even make sense and just, it, they're like gambling stocks. This one might be, this one's got a little more history now. I know back in the, you know, back here, it was just like, just running straight up. <clears throat> Clear downtrend, I mean, that's obvious downtrend right there. So we're above that downtrend, we broke out. Let's just do, look at that. Um, so this downtrend, there's the COVID drop. So there's your bullish divergence. Usually on downtrends, just to show you guys, if you look at right there, if I can get it. See how we continued to make, we started to move higher in the momentum in the RSI and yet price during that time was continuing to drift a little lower. 
So that was your bullish divergence signaling that a trend reversal was likely. And then, you know, this is kind of micro stuff, but obviously we broke trend and ramped higher. Uh, this one, yeah, prices seem to be kind of consolidating around their IPO opening prices in this area. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't have a good read on it. I, it, it, you had a big run up, you know, it spiked from the breakout here. You ran up what? 900%. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, something runs up 900%. I'd say that's a pretty good move in such a short period of time. And it just outlines the kind of speculative nature of these things. You know, they run up 900% in a period of what a month or <laughs> two months, three months. It's, you know, so I, if I was long this thing, I, I definitely would have taken profit uh, on that spike. And I, it looks like it's probably coming back down to earth. You know, it's probably going to come back down and do a back test. All right. Sound check. Can you guys hear me okay? Just want to make sure. I see some comments. How's that? Is that better? How's that? Is that a little bit better? I don't know. I'm adjusting my mic. Okay. Let's keep going. Labu. I've never even heard of that one. Oh, uh, this is a 3x uh, ETF, yeah, inverse ETF on biotech. Okay. All right. One thing about the 3x, you know, the inverses and the, you know, anything that's leveraged, uh, you've got you've got decay because they've got to buy options and futures to get that leverage and those those you know erode over time now if you get the if you catch the trend right and you you know then you know and the timing that decay can work in you know in your favor but uh you know you do have to understand that uh, and I'm I don't trade options so whenever anybody asks me you know you know how do I short I, I sell short I sell stock short all right so what what you're doing is you're basically borrowing stock from someone who owns it most of the time they don't even know that it's being borrowed it, this is all handled in the mechanics of the brokerage but you borrow stock from any someone that owns it and if the price goes down then you basically return their stock back to them and you keep the difference between uh, you know b between what you gave it back to them and, and what you borrowed it at so that's how I short I sell stock short and I don't have to worry necessarily about time decay with options put you know put put options are a, a bearish bet using options but they expire and from my perspective it's hard enough to to get the market trends right that I don't want to add an extra level of complexity. If I feel very strong that I'm right on a trend or right on a trade, I'll just take a larger position size. And I use margin, you know, I have margin account. That to be a day trader or a pattern to, to make multiple trades throughout the week, you, you need to have a you know, you need to have a uh, you'll be classified as a pattern day trader. And so you'll need to have, uh, you'll need to meet those requirements um, and getting margin is part of that. Uh, one thing about margin, and obviously I don't recommend anything around margin because you can get yourself in trouble. One way to use margin is to um, only use the amount of cash that you have in the margin account. This is one, you know, as, as you begin get started and stuff, that's one way to do it is maybe let's say you've got 25,000 and then they give you a four to one uh, borrow ratio. So you have a hundred thousand buying power, take, take trades or positions that are only 25,000. All right. Only using your cash. You're not actually using the margin, but that will give you opportunity to, you know, get in and out of positions without getting a, a cash call. Basically nothing there is obviously, I can't recommend anything. I'm not a financial advisor, so I've got to, 
cover my liabilities on that one. Uh, Labu. I'm just looking through this. So there's your negative divergence. I, I think it, the entry's not good. It's already played out, um, or it's you know it's already started. But all right. So there's your divergent high, and there's your negative divergence. So if I was going to trade this, I would have looked for some sort of a break of this trend line uh, here, and you know, and the, and it's already started to play out. It's already started to downtrend. So I wouldn't just be shorting this here again. It's all about keeping, you know, entering your position, especially when shorting. You want to be close to risk, close to your levels or trend lines, basically. Uh, because, I mean, first off, shorting, you're always, you're in the minority when you're shorting, all right? That's just the nature of shorting. That's why stocks fall a lot faster than they go up, because there's not nearly as many shorts and everybody's long. So when, every, so when things go down, that, that wave of sellers from all the people that are long comes in and, and then the, the you know the the few short sellers that are sh selling something short collect all you know collect a lot of the, that money and get really big gains but stocks go up you know eight out of ten days so they'll grind and grind and grind higher and then they'll break in those two days that they break they'll give back all those gains pretty quickly uh, so I wouldn't want to short here it's just not a good level you know you're below the 200 day but you've already you know, I'd want to short up here. I'd look for a better opportunity. That's my opinion. Let's see here. What else do we got, guys? Just trying to look to find something interesting. Uh, DBX. I'm not familiar with that one. I, I know I've heard of that. Dropbox. Okay. Sorry guys, can't type this morning. <clears throat> I already have this one charted out. <clears throat> um, so you've got some resistance here. We're above resistance. We broke, you know, that is a breakout. That does look like a pretty clean breakout above that resistance. Um, Somebody, I must have hit my volume. Yeah, you got a volume spike right there too. So the way I would treat this until it until it proves differently is you've got a breakout, you're back testing support, and you're 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 above support. So support's holding. Even here, this daily candle, see we opened here and it boom, the buyers are ramped it right back above support. So that's holding. And I would look for higher prices until that changes. Now, if you get a false breakout and you break down and start to break down back below this level, which is about 26, uh, we'll just call it 26, then that would be very bearish because false breakouts uh, trap a lot of bulls and uh, that would be bearish. And if that happens, I'd say we go right down to the 200-day moving average down here at around 2170. But if that doesn't happen, you know, if that doesn't happen, I think we go higher. And there's not a lot of history, really. So, yeah, I don't know. Higher, potentially. You have, you've got the all-time highs, so you could mark that out. You know, and that's sitting way up there at 42. So that's a possibility. Until this picture right here proves it wrong, I would say that's holding support and going to move higher. <clears throat> Um, and look, no negative divergence, really. I mean, you do you do have some negative divergence going back here. There, I take that back. There is some negative divergence right there, all right? And this was a divergent high, this little pop, and they faded that. And actually, this is a divergent high as well. So I take that back. There is negative divergence. So it could reverse and you could get that false breakout and just watch for that that's what i'd say if it if you get the false breakout with negative divergence that's going to be very bearish otherwise you know could go higher
Cloud Fair. That's another one of those COVID high flying. I, I I shorted I shorted all kinds of these things back. You know, I'd been talking about those for weeks or months, and then I they all played out for you know pretty massive gains. This is one of those. Um, this one hasn't doesn't look like it's sold off too much. Let me check the range here. Oh, that's a 34% drop. Um, so there's your COVID lows. Yeah. Hmm. Well, okay, this trend line is not the cleanest because I've got a reaction low here and I've got a cluster of reactions there, but I don't have, that's, you know, this cluster, I'm only considering a single data point. So I have two. Here is not, you know, you can, we're starting to get some reactions. See how we're kind of treading right underneath it and then impulsively break. So that's how I would treat this. This looks like AMD to me, where you, you've got the false breakdown, bear trap, but it was just a fake out, you know. Again, if institutions aren't short, they might do this, use this to run stops, pop it back above, and then they're getting short all through here, and then it, and then they write it down. So um, this one has downward momentum, downward price action. As you can see, there's your negative divergence. So this was all divergent high. Or yeah, this. I would short this one. I, I wouldn't, sh you know, I wouldn't want to short it here. I'd like to short it up here. So if you got short up there, I think that's your, your better entry. If you get a back test, maybe you get a, maybe we back test all the way here. That would be your entry. Uh, right here, being that we are basically about 10%, you'd have to, you'd have to be willing to give it some room. You know, if it goes against you 10%, and that's only on a back test right here. We could go sideways and then run up and do a back test way up here. So again, it's all about where you get your position at. You could be down 20% and still technically a, a valid short trade. Uh, this one looks like it's probably, you've got, all right, so this one you've got a break. See that candle right there, that big breakout candle. We'll see if we can line that up with anything. It's almost two breakout candles. Yeah. Not a lot of not a lot of reactions in this, you know, in this area. So I would look at there's your first level of support. So that's got to go at 6175. Hit that, you can see we held all through there and that's where we hit it again on the third, so three three reactions. So if that goes, you got the 200 day, the 200 breaks, then down she goes, you know, probably going to head down to, you know, probably going to head down to this area, this kind of range right in here. So anywhere from 40, you know, 43 down to 33 or so. All right, moving on. What do you guys got? Anything good? No, no, I, someone asked about the 25K on a margin account. That's the minimum that you're gonna need to have to open up. <clears throat> if you get a PDT, a pattern day trade uh, call, then you need to get your your account over 25,000. That's the, it's a SEC rule, 25,000. So, um, you know, if you don't have that, then I, I think you can get margin accounts through other ways with less than 25,000. I just know that the pattern day trade rule, if you're gonna make more than four trades in a five day period, I believe that's what it is. It's been a while since I've been flagged for pattern day trade. It's, you know, it's been a long time, but um, if you're, you know, if you're gonna make more than four trades in a five day period, then you'll get flagged and your broker will actually won't let you trade. They'll, they'll close your account. Well, they won't close it. They'll just put a hold on it, I think for 90 days or, yeah, I think it's 90 days. And then, you know, you just can't trade with that account for, for that 90 days or until you get your, 
you get your uh, uh, your cash account above twenty five thousand, and you get classified as a pattern day trader. It doesn't really mean much. It just is a, for some reason the SEC they want people that have money to lose. I don't know. I personally, I think it's probably something lobbied to Congress to to keep. You know, to keep that racket for the banks and the trading desks at the institutions and, and keep most people out of that game. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I covered Boeing already, so you can go back and watch the video. Uh, JP Morgan. Yeah, so we. I covered Goldman Sachs in the very. That's the very first one I covered was Goldman Sachs, but we can look at uh, JP Morgan. So I don't see, you know. It's, uh, so you, yeah, we've got negative divergence now. There it is in the PPO and the RSI had made an equal high. If I zoom in on the RSI, you can see it's, well, it's slightly higher, but it's close enough that it's an equal high in momentum. And, but that equal high in momentum was made on higher price. So this is divergence high, a divergent high price. Looks like we've been kind of stalling out a little bit too on this. So I just watch, I would just watch that. And right now that's about 149.75. A break of that and we're likely heading down to, you know, 130, 134. Um, and yet, yeah, on this one also, you've got this longer term trend line coming off the 2011 lows. So you can see all the reactions on that. That's been recovered and that would be a breakdown to that trend line, all right? That's your, that's your bull market trend line. It has recovered it. So unless that fails, then this thing's still in a longer term bull market. Viacom. That's a specs. That's one of those GME stocks. I think that's one of those like uh, Wall Street bet stocks. W what's the symbol on Viacom? I, I I don't trade those. To me, those are more like kind of. That's just more like gambling. You yeah. You might hit. Likely gonna lose. Those one thing about like GME and the reason why I don't really cover it on this channel. First off, I don't really try to encourage that kind of stuff. But the thing you have to realize is. Playing that GME kind of crazy momentum stuff is like playing a slot machine. It's going to take, most people will lose money and it's going to consolidate all that money and the people that got in early, the smart money. I can show you guys what GME looked like and I'll, I'll tell you when you should have gotten into GME. Right down here. This is when I, if I was looking at it, which I wasn't because I don't like penny stocks a lot of the time, but I have it circled. I, this is the smart money. This is your Michael Burry's and whoever else was in there. I don't know, but see this. Um, let me let me redraw the line. Right there. See the momentum. All right, you made a low in momentum there, and then you made a high. See how it started to trend up. This was higher momentum, higher momentum, higher momentum. All right, so you st there's your bullish divergence. So when we made a new low, um, which really showed up, see, even this isn't a new low, but there's your spike down, there's your new low. That's your divergent low, and I have that circled. So that low was made on higher momentum right there than, than previous. So that's your bullish divergence. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, okay, buy it there. I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't have bought it there, but that tells you that there's bullish divergence. Then you start to build and as I scroll out, you can see this momentum continued to trend up. And, you know, there's your downtrend. I w there's a downtrend right there. You've got reactions. And as I zoom in, this is, you know, there's your breakout. So you, you could have maybe right there. That's a nice clean breakout candle, obviously. But you really started to break out right in here. So you could have been buying or adding right in here. And boom, you know, just off to the races and this thing just went, you know, like a rocket ship. But again, most people, if you look at the volume and that when it, this thing become, became known publicly, most people, were, I heard about it from everybody, all of my friends and everything. Oh, you buying GME, you know? No, I'm not buying, buying GME. But when I heard about it was 
here, all right, way up in here. And so most people with the volume, they'll, they'll lose money. And it's the, the few, the low volume, the, you know, the smart money that gets in down here, they make all the money. They make the real money. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, you can trade the momentum. And obviously, you know, I had a friend who made 50 grand in a day, you know, trading this. And he was calling me in the morning and checking in. And, yeah, he made 50 grand in a day. He put 20, he put 28 grand on it, um, you know, and held it overnight. And the next day it was up, you know, 150%. And he, he sold it. That can happen, obviously. All right, let's get, get on to some other stuff. Costco. All right. All right, Costco. Let's look at the weekly. I'm not sure how this blue line. All right, so there's your longer term bull market in Costco, still in a bull market. Uh, so I would just trade this as if it's in a bull market until it changes. Uh, yeah, it's, I think we're probably going to come down though. Um, as I zoom in on the daily, extend that out, you know, and you can see basically. We closed, we closed Friday right at resistance. I, I wish I caught this. I probably would have shorted it right here. Um, we'll see how Monday opens up if we're at or near that level. Um, and I, th you know, let me look, make sure we have some divergence going on. Yeah, we do. So, you know, there's your divergence. It's just extended it on last week. Extend it out, but still there, still negative divergence. So this, uh, your divergent high, that's a divergent high. See how it spiked above the previous high, right there, spiked above it, but on way less momentum. There's another divergent high spiked above that previous high, on less momentum. So and then that negative divergence started to play out. So there's your divergence, and that tells you a trend reversal is likely. But we didn't really get a break of trend until right here. So it had to come all the way down. And so, you know, from the high down to there is 11 and a half percent or so, but then you got the break of trend. So, you know, I wouldn't have shorted this most likely until we broke trend, which would have been right about here. Break trend, come down. Now it's giving you a kickback rally. That's what that is. Doesn't mean it has, to, you know, it could recover. You know, you could, this could be a false breakdown, but short into resistance, go long into support that's the best you can do and then trade it you know and then uh, manage the trade so watch it now they could spike it monday they could spike it up watch that price action if they spike it up if they spike it up here let's say they gap up does it sell off impulsively does it just sell off right back below and if it does that's going to be your tell that this thing's going lower likely coming down to this lower trend line is what i would say uh and that's down here at, you know depending on when we get there 280 or so. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to go another 10 minutes or so, and then and then I'll wrap up. Uh, Mara. That's another one of these high flying, mo or maybe it's not. Thought I heard about this one from somewhere. This is an oil stock. Oh, digital holdings. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking Marathon Oil. Um, yeah, this is one of those stocks. I don't know what they do. I it doesn't really matter. Hmm. This one's interesting. It looks like it's kind of going parabolic and yet I'm on log scaling. If you turn the log scaling off, yeah, I mean, this is, this thing's crazy. I don't have an opinion on this. I, I can't really give any opinion on this. Um, from what, a penny in November to 50 bucks? It, it just at first glance, I mean, it looks like we're getting some volatility, lots of volatility up here, which all, you know, when you start to see volatility show up, it's often a sign of uh, trend reversal. But no, I can't get a, I can't give an opinion on that one. Um, 
sorry, I'm just looking through these. Yeah, I mean, someone asked about the Costco could be a problem with cargo ships getting stuck in the Suez Canal. <clears throat> yeah, it. you know, the thing about that is, let me go back to the oil stock just to show you guys real quick. Try to highlight this. Like, here's XLE. All right, we broke trend, and this is why they always try to find a headline to tap to tag on to a, a move because those those companies those TV channels want to get you to tune into TV and and so they can sell ads but we were in an uptrend right we broke trend there was negative divergence it started to show signs that oil was gonna break and I was talking about how I thought oil was gonna you know have a some sort of a pullback and we had been, we've been downtrended been downtrending and I think the Suez Canal thing just showed up right here right when we hit support on you know basically this first support level uh that this is when the suez canal thing the news showed up and they said oh this is you know the oil prices are going to spike because now there's a blockage all right is that coincidence i don't know you know i mean it, this happens all the time where you'll you'll break that it'll be in the chart well in advance another example is just if you look at the spy all right basically right here this is right before covid this is right before covid before anybody cared about covid let's just put it that way the mar covid was in the news well you know all through here we were hearing about covid and the market didn't care it wasn't a problem but we were at resistance major resistance so the market just smashed it down all right, it was in the chart that we were at resistance and we had big negative divergence back there. So this is one of the reasons why in those videos I kept saying, okay, guys, I think this is the top. You know, I don't know if it's going to, nothing's, given enough time, nothing's ever going to be the forever top. But I kept saying that this is the top. I was fully short. I, the video I pointed out was saying, you know, here, I'm short. I'm getting short right here. Here's why. And then, you know, obviously I, I caught pretty much all of this drop. Most people, and I get a lot of trash talkers, I guarantee most of those trash talkers didn't catch this drop. What they do is they, they're long up here, they get caught, and then they get bailed out by the Fed. And then they start talking trash way up here. You know, that's kind of how it works. Or they talk trash as it's recovering. That's possible. Uh, but again, I was long, I was short here, and I got long actually down here. I flipped long down here. Now, I didn't just ride it long all the way up, so I did miss, you know, a big chunk of this, and I'll be completely honest about that. But I did catch, you know, the bottom, and I, you know, caught a good chunk of this pop, and then I started looking for more downside. All right, took a sh I took a couple shots short down, you know, in this area. They didn't work out. Again, take small losses and wait for better opportunity. The point is that I'm trying to make is it was in the charts that COVID was going to, the market was going to care. So all of a sudden when the market sold off, started to sell off, the market cared about COVID, but COVID wasn't the news in advance. All right, let's get on to stuff. LL Lily or Eli Lily. Well, looks like a longer term bull trend. I would say that's not been negated. Okay, so longer term bull trend. Let's look at what we got going on. A lot of gaps in here, that's interesting. These gaps are likely going to get filled at some point. Uh, no negative divergence. So you can see the price is just drifting lower, kind of going lower, and yet momentum is also drifting lower. So that doesn't that you know that's just a downtrend within a you know that's just a downward move within an uptrend the trend is up you, clearly it's up and you're just getting a downward move 
within an uptrend. You know, if I had to guess, because I suspect we're probably going to, I would look at this running down and filling this gap, uh, hitting that 200 day, and that's likely your buy spot. That's what, that's how I'd probably treat this. Because I don't see, this isn't something I'd want to short. All right, this is not a short. Uh, there's no divergence telling me that we're going to get a trend reversal, so the trend is up. But I wouldn't want to buy right here. You're kind of in the middle of this of these two gaps. Oh, you do have an island cluster top. Just notice that right there. Keep an eye on that. Um, you know that you don't have to have negative divergence to signal a top. It's just another indicator. But this is an island cluster top. So you see how we basically gapped up a small gap and then gap down creating this top uh yeah so watch that that could be something to pay attention to but i would say we're likely heading down here to fill the gap could come down here and fill this gap um yeah pallet pallet tar that's another one of them you know all those uh arc investing stocks Man, they were they were just way overvalued. I mean, I, I had a bu I was looking at them. I have a bunch of them highlighted here in red. I was just kind of keep an eye on all of them, looking to fade them all. Like I don't know if Neo's one, but this was a screaming short, and it continues to work. Um, obviously, Tesla, you know, is just out of control. Doesn't mean it can't remain out of control, but it's it, it, I I would put very low probability that this thing is not going to have a meaningful more meaningful pullback. I think Tesla's coming down to fill some of these gaps. Uh, you know, you've got a gap in Tesla way down here, all the way down at 60 bucks. Now that's, the, the farther down, obviously, the lower the probability that's gonna happen. But it's completely possible that Tesla could fill that, and that would be a drop of, what, 90%? I mean, that's a crash. But again, Tesla went shot to the moon. So, you know, it's just the counter move of that that move, and that could that could happen. So. A lot of these ones, PLTR, are, are yeah. I, I charted this, you got a bearish rising wedge, negative divergence, it's breaking down. So now we're in this thin zone. Um, you could give it a little more room if you wanted to, maybe say there, just benefit of the doubt, it's always, but you can see this is a thin zone basically from the IPO or the opening price it just kind of shot straight up with very little trading time just straight up you get down into there which is about a break of what 20 90 you get down into that area and you're gonna just probably go back down to these IPO prices uh, so I would watch for that um, yeah, see, I don't see any bullish divergence. So, yes, if you wanted to adjust this down to here, you could say this is support. Um, it's not my favorite support because, look, you've got a reaction here and you've got a reaction here. You have two. This is a whip right through it. I don't know where this one found support, uh, but, you know, clearly we had some support there and there. So we have two. All right, three would be better, four, five, six. That's even better. So, again, I would just... Uh, you know, and I don't have any bullish divergence. So I, right now, I just see downward momentum. And you know, this was so this was negative divergence right at this moment in time because this was making new higher prices, and yet momentum was less. That was your negative divergence. Now that negative momentum, now price is you know becoming uh, it's converging with that price is moving down as momentum was moving down in advance. Momentum obviously, mo momentum will oftentimes uh, be a forward indicator. So now price is now moving down with the momentum and I don't see a reversal of that. I don't see an indication that we're, you know, that we're done selling off. All right, Bayer. I actually own some Bayer, I think, in a foreign uh, a foreign account that I have that owns Bayer. Uh, but I don't know. I don't think you. I'm not sure if you can buy that with. Oh, that was Monsanto, wasn't that Monsanto Bayer? I think they bought 
Monsanto. I don't know what the symbol is, though. Am I expecting a large correction? Well, we've gotten a correction in tech. Let me go to the tech. You know, I... You know, it's hard to say. I, I gotta get. I gotta get here and clean up this chart. It's like a battleground. You know, every day I'm looking at the charts, and but here's the thing. You know, bigger picture, tech is in a bull market, and it still is. It has not changed. You, you know, you look at the weekly, and there's your 2009 lows. There's your bull market. Now the Fed has manipulated this bull market, and they've overshot it. I think so. We have an upward channel. We've overshot this channel. We have big, I mean, you look at the weekly, you've got big negative divergence on the weekly. Now, this doesn't give you an entry. This isn't going to tell you, okay, now is the time to short, but this is going to give you an idea of where we might be heading in the next months, maybe years or whatever. So we've overshot that price channel and we have big negative, This, this these high prices up here really from, all this has been divergent high price action on the weekly chart. So, you know, I put out videos every single day. And if I say, oh, I think we're going to get a correction, it, you know, obviously people get tired of hearing it, but it's based on bigger picture stuff. So I'm not going to flip bullish when I have the charts telling me that we're going to trend lower. Um, so I think we're probably, you know, on tech. If I had to tell you where I think we're going, and I don't know how we'll get there, but I think we're going to get down to the bottom of this trend line and, and then, you know, probably break. I'm not going to, you know, I'll just evaluate it as we, as things happen. You know, we first, we got to get down to this bottom trend line around, you know, 288 or so 285. And then we got to break that. And then we got to get down here and then we got to break that. So there's things that have to happen, but this negative divergence on the weekly and this overshoot, which is really Fed induced, you know, they, they they pumped it up. The Fed causes the bulls, the you know, the they cause the the bus and the uh, you know the bull markets and the bear markets basically. So yeah, I think we're gonna, you know, I think we're gonna, and that's why I got these longer term targets marked down down here, right? right? Those those remain kind of longer term bull market targets, and then the spy broke its bullish trend. You know, here's your spy. And it broke bullish trend, you know, but the Fed broke it when they're raising rates here, then they cut rates and then they did a bunch more money pumping and cut more rates on the COVID crash. And they, you know, each one of these rallies has Fed induced, it's not earnings, all right? And now the market and the mainstream media wants to tell you there's this big reopening trade and earnings are gonna come flying back. It, I, I just, it's just not there, you know, and technically it's not there, all right? We're b below the bull trend. So what will happen if this plays out is we'll you know start to get rejected somewhere in this area we could overshoot there could be a blow off top you know maybe we, they ramp it up make it look like it's going to you know recover this trend line and then break that's always possible so you got to be on guard for that especially if you're shorting uh but you know i think it's likely we're going to sell off work our way lower you know it's not going to be a plunge like a covid plunge it's going to be a a drop, a kickback rally, a kind of a drop. It, you know, it's going to grind lower, and then as it gets lower and lower, the selling will intensify as more and more people start to, you know, realize what's going on. And then the news will change, and they'll they'll figure out some reason why we have problems of the reopening or whatever. So that's kind of how I see it. Until this technical picture changes longer term, and I see some more constructive, you know, recovery of this support line. I'll, I'm going to continue to remain bearish and look for, you know, look more to the short side, especially right up here against re the resistance like this. All right, guys, I think that's about time. It's 10 o'clock. That's an hour. So before you guys leave, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you guys find value in these videos, in these live streams. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a nice, refreshing uh way to look at the charts versus just kind of going through what I'm looking at and throwing out the trade videos. But um, if you guys haven't taken the course, take the course. I think it's worth, you know, it, it's, it was worth my time to put it together. And I think it's worth your time to take it. If you haven't taken it uh, for a hundred bucks, that's a good value. No question about it. And besides that, I will catch you guys on Monday. Bye.